Hello guys, welcome to another video with Joseph Manifesting. In today's video, we're going to talk about the most commonly asked questions about uh, challenges people will have manifesting SP back. Some of these are going to be based upon my own experience. Some of these are going to be based upon coaching questions that I get. Some of these are going to be based upon Facebook questions that I get. So today's video, I trust, will answer all questions you have about how to manifest your SP in this single video. If you need to, obviously reference it and keep coming back to it so you can remind yourself over and over again of the reality that you're choosing. So let's start with the first question. What do I do in the 3D while manifesting SP? You wanna take your attention away from the 3D as much as possible because when, when, when you're looking out, all it is doing is your senses are affirming certain things based upon what it says. And if this is all you're consuming, you're gonna remain a victim to 3D experiences and circumstances. So as often as you can, you want to withdraw your senses by closing your eyes, taking your attention away from the world and all the things that you identify with, going within and seeing yourself in a loving relationship with your SP now. And Neville talks about this many, many times. He talks about you wanna feel the feeling of the wish fulfilled. Let's take you back a second. What did you feel like when you were in a loving relationship? What did you feel like when you had the love of your life? I know for me, there was a gratitude, there was a love, there was a satisfaction. I knew I was in a loving relationship with my SP. Now, it may seem hard to reach this state while your eyes are open and you're paying attention to the world. That's because you're still identified with, with a personality here. But when you withdraw your attention, and Neville talks about this continuously, calls it the art of prayer, you're withdrawing your attention from your outside world and bringing it within. And when you're not conscious of being a person, you're not conscious of identifying with anything, it's very easy for you to feel as though you are who it is that you desire to be. Next question. How long will it take for me to manifest my SP back? Now, this question happens a lot, obviously. Us as human beings, there's a reason why Amazon is such a big thing. We want everything yesterday. When you go fourth dimensionally, which is where everything is created, your inner world, you are in a loving relationship now. And so we can't focus on the time because that implies that we don't have it. And so as often as possible, again, withdraw your attention from whatever's happening out here. If your mind's telling you different things, withdraw your attention. Go within and feel as though you're in a loving relationship now. The amount of time that it takes is determined by how natural it feels for you to be in a loving relationship with your SP. Neville talks about this many times. So we do the techniques, we give it to ourselves, we affirm, we visualize, we do sats until we feel as though we're in a loving relationship. Often this is our dominant state of being. It is very, very close to manifesting 3D after that. Another one that I will hear often is, my SP said this, they don't, that they don't want to be with me or that they'll never talk to me again or that I'm the worst thing that ever happened to them. We'll never work because of our parents. We'll never work because of this, because of this. Fill in the blank with whatever it is that they said. Your state of consciousness you were occupied was not being in a loving relationship or that the relationship was going to fail, that the person then manifested as being in harmony with that assumption and saying things that align with what it was that you were assuming, that they're gonna leave you, that it wouldn't work, etc. They just aligned with what it was that you were assuming was going to happen. So what they said is irrelevant. They were playing a part that you assigned them. Now, remember, SPs, they do have their own free will, they do have their own role, etc. And they may show up a certain way in your world based upon their self-concept. However, how they continue to show up is now your responsibility. Do you continue to see them in a manner that they tell you that they are? So are you a, a, a victim to what it is that they're saying? Or are you using your power to create whatever it is that you'd like to create? I have a couple of videos on my channel if you'd like to reference where I was dealing with my boss that was very rude to everybody, including me, until I changed my mind and then that person changed. I did it with my, Manifest My Wife back twice. I'll put a link in, in the comments so that way you can reference it. But my point is, is that what the SP said doesn't matter because it's just aligning with a state that you chose to identify with. When you choose to be in a loving relationship with this person, 
it'll be as if nothing ever happened and the person will show up again in harmony with what it is that you're assuming about them. Uh, I have this situation in 3D. My, my SP is with somebody else. My SP moved to a different state. My SP doesn't talk to me. My SP behaves this way to me. My SP is very mean. Fill in the blank again with any outside circumstance that you're having. Again, the point of manifesting is not to get the SP to change. It is to change ourselves about the way we see our SP. Affirmation, visualization, sats, this is all to change me. I change myself and the way that I see this person and then that person uh, changes. So everything that we have in life is, is neutral. There is no meaning to anything. It is our beliefs that then filter and we see certain things based upon these beliefs or these assumptions. So if you reverse engineer this, if you are in a loving relationship with this specific person, your filter will then show that that's the case. So your job, no matter what the outside circumstances is, is to remove your attention from these things. And this happened a lot for me, it happened for a lot of people that I coach. We don't want to reference what they did in the past. They said this, they do this, they work here, they don't work here, they do this. We want to focus solely on our inner world and being in a loving relationship. And it may be helpful for you, I did this, to write down an ideal list of what you wanted. Imagine you're doing a Build-A-Bear. You're building a SB, right, from scratch. What is it that you want the relationship to look like? Write this all down. And then either visualize experiencing this now Feel as though you have this now, affirm that you have this now, whatever it is that helps put you into that state to where you feel like you're in the ideal marriage or relationship now. This is what you wanna focus on. What they said, again, doesn't matter. This is all, they're, they're playing a part based upon your assumptions of them. So nothing they said was uh, matters at all. You change the script, you change your, you're the director, change the movie, and then the characters will change to to mirror the change that you did within. Again though, the point is not to get the SP to change. The point is to get you to change the way you see the SP. My SP blocked me. How will they contact me? How will this, how will this work? This is gonna be the exact same idea as the last question. It is again, not worrying about anything outside of you. You're in a loving relationship. How can you look for proof? How can you wonder how it's going to work if you're in a loving relationship? You, you, you've experienced this many times. How many times when you're thinking about somebody or you're like, oh, I love that person, whatever it is, and then they contact you within a couple hours. There's a such thing as thought transmission. And to share this even further, don't talk to your friends about your SP. Don't talk to your family about your SP. Don't talk to Anybody about your SP, don't go on Facebook looking for information to reference if this is possible, don't go for, because what you're going to see most of the time is people that are living the way of the world. You're doing spiritual things, you're manifesting using the power of your I am. There's not information out here for you to, to uh, look at, right? It is about going within and, and expressing your power, using your power, deciding what it is that you want to experience carving your own path, trusting in yourself, having tunnel vision of success. I am in a loving relationship and standing strong and firm on that claim, remaining faithful. You are staying loyal to the unseen state, regardless of what you see here, etc. doesn't matter. You are in a loving relationship. You have to have that bra brazen impudence. How do I deal with all the thinking and emotions? I feel as though they're blocking my manifestation. So let's like dissect what an emotion is. An emotion is energy in motion. So much like everything else in life, there is no meaning that anything has. Everything is simply just is. And then it's our beliefs that then filter to give this a meaning of what this means. So an emotion is energy in motion. There's nothing wrong with it. In fact, it is healthy to allow yourself to feel emotions so that the human part of you can process things. Emotions don't stop you from manifesting. The first time that I manifest my wife back, I was neurotic, I was anxiety, sad, all over the place, angry, frustrated. 
and I still manifested my wife back. So the emotion portion doesn't matter so much. It is the fact that you are in your mind, you're in a loving relationship no matter what. In your mind, you're going through this emotion because it's bridge of incidences that may help it manifest in your 3D. In your mind, you're going through this because it's all aligning with what your heart desire is. Everything is working for you, conspiring for you. The funny thing is, you'll notice it actually is. If I were to try to figure out how I was going to manifest my wife back both times, the way that it happened, I would have never been able to think of. It just didn't make I would have never thought of that. And so it is in your best interest to look at everything, the thoughts you're thinking, the emotions that you're feeling, everything that's happening outside of you. It's all in harmony with your vision. So feel whatever you want to emotionally, love on yourself, allow yourself to feel what you're feeling, completely fine and wonderful. I believe it's in harmony with the vision. Mentally though, you're in a loving relationship with your individual person, with your SP. Do I work on me, my self concept, or do I affirm about them? I never really affirmed about myself. My, my thought patterns on this was that when I saw myself in a loving relationship and I continued to be there in a loving relationship, I automatically changed into the person that I needed to be in order to experience that reality. Because the father does the work. My only job is I assume that something is so. I stay faithful. The father then inspires me to take action brings up old stuff for me to purge and process, helps me work through things, helps me go certain places. This all happens automatically to me based upon the fact that I say I am in a loving relationship. So I'm a big believer that affirming that I'm in a loving, mutually beneficial relationship is the ideal manner of manifesting an SP. If I'm saying I, I'm so loved, I'm so appreciated, I will see proof of this outside of me. However, it may not be specific to my individual person. I may see it in general and everywhere else that I go. Now, if that's ideal for you, well then you would want to do a specific, I'm loved, I'm desired, I'm appreciated. And you would see then proof of this outside of you from many different sources. But if you're wanting this specific person like I did, I just wanted my wife to be in a loving relationship with her. I was specific on saying I'm in a loving relationship with my wife. So it's really gonna depend on what, what it is that you're shooting for. What if there's a third party? Now again, a lot of these things are gonna be personal preference, your value system, etc. For me, if there's a third party, I wouldn't want to manifest that specific person. It's something that I just, I feel like it would be too much work for me to work through in order for me to want to. But if for you it's ideal, well then you would go back to being in a loving relationship with your person. And anytime you're having thoughts about this person or you're having doubts or any of the stuff, this will come up a lot. I don't know if I can do this, this person's with this, this is happening, et cetera, et cetera. The most important thing that you can do is, is center yourself, remind yourself that, that you're consciousness, that you're the awareness, that, that you are the awareness of being before there's a personality or identification or any thoughts or any emotions. You're the observer of what's happening through this body that we're experiencing. And so you want to get back to that place because if not, you can get overwhelmed by thoughts, overwhelmed by emotions, overwhelmed by fears. You're going to feel as though your outside world is just so chaotic and so big. That there's no way that you can complete it. This always lets you know that you need to take a couple of deep breaths. You need to relax. You need to calm yourself as best as possible. There's a really nice breathing technique I came across, I think on, on YouTube or something. And the individual inhale through their nose as much as they can inhale, and then they'll hold it for a second, inhale a second time, and then breathe out through their mouth very slowly. Repeat this a couple of times, it should help slow your nervous system down, help slow your, your thought patterns down, so then that way you kind of center yourself. Another thing I really like to do is I like to take a list of all the successes I've had all the times I manifested wonderful things, it puts my perspective back, reminding me I am the cause. I am the God of my reality. I am what causes everything to show up in my world. And that I can, in fact, will do this. I will read lists of everything that I've succeeded in. I manifested money, manifested my car, manifested this, 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 this. And as I read this over and over again, I still start to feel confident. I start to feel empowered. I'm back into the right perspective because this is the reality is that 
reality is a victim to you. You're not a victim to reality. Guys, if I forgot a question, by the way, please do post it down in the comment section and I'll do my best to answer it. I'm sure also to be helpful for, for many people that are watching this video. If you enjoyed today's video, please do like, subscribe, and share this information so that other people can be helped. If you're interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching, you can reach me on my details portion of my YouTube page, my email's on there, or you can reach me at uh, my website. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Take care.